The wait is finally over. Today, we are looking at the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. This video is going to be focusing on the physical overview, software overview and usability. So let's take a look at the camera physically and talk about some of its features. Out of the box, you get a copy of DaVinci Resolve Studio, a power supply unit with a range of plug adapters, the software manual on an SD card and the camera. The camera feels very good in the hand. It's a little bigger than some of its competition, but the grip feels nice and it's lighter than you may think. Let's start looking at the front. You have a regular MFT mount which behind its 19.25 back flange distance homes the 18.96 by 10mm 4 thirds sensor. This sensor is stated to have 13 stops of dynamic range, a maximum recording resolution of 4K DCI and dual native ISO of 400 and 3200. This dual native ISO is one of its most appealing features. When you're adjusting your ISO it will automatically switch between the two native ISOs of 400 and 3200. When you are between 100 and 1000 it will use the native 400 and then when you're between 1250 and 25600 it will use 3200 as its native that means if you're shooting at 1000 you're better off cutting out some light and switching to 1250 to get a cleaner image you also have two front facing microphones a tally light and a scroll wheel with button function for controlling aperture you also have two intake and one exhaust fan make sure not to block these moving on to the side you have a range of ports you have a 3.5 mil mic in for mics like Rode's video mic pro a headphone out for checking audio a full-size hdmi for monitors this output is a 1080p 10-bit 42 image, a USB-C which can be used for recording directly to ex external SSDs as well as power, a 12-volt 2-pin port for remotely powering the camera and a mini XLR for higher quality mics. This also has phantom power. On the other side you have your card slots, one CFast and one SD UHS-2 card slot. On the bottom you have a quarter inch thread for mounting, there are a few locating pins here also, and a door to the battery. The battery is your standard LP6, Blackmagic say you get roughly an hour of recording with one LP6. But from our personal experience, it's much less than that. You can remove the battery door cover and it doesn't affect your recording. On the top of your camera, you have a second mounting point. This is great as it means when you're mounting a cage, you have two points of contact, which will get rid of the regular issue cameras like this have with spinning while mounted in cages. It also has a speaker, two recording buttons, a still button, three function keys, which you can rebind, the power on off switch and buttons to toggle adjusting ISO, shutter speed and white balance. Finally, onto the back. Here we have the huge 5 inch full HD touchscreen. The screen is a very decent size, the touch controls are really responsive and it's decently bright but not enough for shooting on really sunny days. Just to the right of the screen you have several buttons. Auto iris, focus. With the autofocus of this camera the center point can be moved about. You can do this by simply tapping on the screen however this only works with some lenses at the moment and doesn't work with Metabones. I think Metabones need to put out an update first but we'll keep you guys updated whenever that happens. If you want to reset the focus point to the center, you just double press the focus button to reset it. High frame rate mode toggle. This toggle automatically switches you to the last off speed frame rate that you used in the resolution you are shooting in. This is an awesome little detail. Zoom. This punches in digitally two times and you can then drag around either using the top left guide for precise control or the main touch screen for large movements. Menu for accessing the full menu system and playback. So playback has a bit of a quirk. If you switch between either ProRes or RAW, or between different resolutions within ProRes or RAW, you will not be able to view the clips shot in the different modes. So, for example, if I shoot some clips in DCI 4K RAW, and then some clips in UHD RAW, I will not be able to see them both when I hit the play button, just the mode that you are in. Same thing goes for if you're shooting between ProRes and RAW. So if you want to view your ProRes clips, you have to be in ProRes in the menus. And if you want to view your raw clips, you have to be in raw in the menus. This is a bit of a weird quirk, but I'm sure it's something that Blackmagic can fix with a firmware update. While we're back here, let's have a look at the menu and the different features of the camera. The Pocket 4K borrows the operating system from the Ursa Mini Pro. This OS is extremely easy to use and navigate. While monitoring your image, you can access a ton of settings very quickly using the touch interface. You can also hide this menu with simply swiping up or down. Doing the same will bring it back. Starting from left to right, this toggle will bring up your monitoring assists. Here you have a zebra toggle and the level adjustment for it using the slider, a peaking toggle with low, medium and high intensities, SBAC ratio guides for if you're cropping in post, and lastly overlays for rule of third, grid, crosshair or center dot, percentage guides, and lastly false color. False color overlays different colors onto your image that represent exposure values with different elements in your image. For example, pink represents your optimum exposure for Caucasian skin tones, while green is the good match for darker skin tones. By monitoring the pink or green false color when recording people, you can maintain consistency in skin tones given the same ISO. 
Moving on, you can adjust your frame rate here and you also have your off speed frame rate. Enabling this allows you to shoot at your higher frame rates and you can also adjust your frames one at a time if you really want to dial in your frame rate. Next is shutter. Here you can adjust your shutter speeds slash angle and also enable auto exposure of which there are several different modes. After that you have iris. Here you can slide to adjust your aperture on lenses that are recognized and again you have auto exposure at modes. In the center you have time code which you can toggle between free run and record run. Next is ISO, we have a slider for adjusting, you then have white balance, here you have your regular presets, a custom white balance setting with tint adjustment and an auto white balance reading which uses a center scan. You can also then see your tint next to that and then your battery source and percentage remaining. Moving on to the bottom, you have your histogram, record button, then your two media ports, one being the CFast and two being the SD card. If you tap on the source, you'll see more detailed information about your media and also format everything. I would suggest using XFAT. If you plug in an SSD via the USB-C port, it will actually pop up under slot two. Last but not least, you have your audio levels. Tapping on these will allow you to adjust your levels and headphone out volume. If you swipe left or right on your main view, you'll bring up the slate or metadata options. The slate is separated into clip, and project. Clip is information that you may change clip to clip and project is where you enter details that are going to stay consistent on a certain project. Metadata enters into the slate is viewable over the HDMI when output is set to director's view. Let's start with the clip. Slate 4 shows the clip that this metadata applies to. In standby mode or waiting to roll it will say next clip and in playback mode it will say good take. Lens data will take you into another menu screen and allows you to record a description of the lens, aperture, focal length, focus distance and note down what filter you are using. Depending on the lens, your metadata may be passed through automatically. You then have other metadata changes you can make to match your slates. After that, you have project. Within here, you have the ability to add a project name, director, camera and camera operator. Let's delve deeper into the menus. When you hit the menu button on the back of the camera, you are greeted with this menu. From here you can select from six different menus which lead to the deeper sub-menus. Record allows you to change between the two currently available formats, Cinema DNG and ProRes. You can shoot lossless, 3 to 1 and 4 to 1 Cinema DNG, 3 to 1 and 4 to 1 being compression ratios. Cinema DNG is a bit of a difficult codec so we're really hoping that Blackmagic release their new RAW on this camera as soon as possible. You can also shoot ProRes in HQ, 42, LT and Proxy. The resolution modes you currently have available are DCI 4K, Ultra HD and HD. When you are shooting in RAW and switching between different resolutions, you are effectively using less of the sensor. So when you are shooting in DCI 4K, you are using the full sensor. So the crop when compared to full frame 17x9 image is 1.89. You also have a UHD mode which has a crop of 1.99 and lastly a 1080p mode. This has a crop of 3.97 compared to full frame and when compared to this sensor it's 2.09. This is awesome for people wanting to use Super 16 lenses as this crop mode will allow you to use a sensor size small enough for these lenses to cover. When you're shooting in ProRes, things work a little differently. If you're shooting in DCI or UHD, you have the same crop as RAW, but when you're in HD, you can choose between the same crop as UHD or crop in like the HD RAW crop. When it comes to frame rates, it differs between RAW and ProRes. In RAW, you can shoot up to 60p in DCI or UHD and up to 120p in 1080p. In ProRes, you are limited to 60p in all resolutions. When it comes to data rates, Blackmagic have only given us numbers for the codex at 30 frames a second. So I've put together a Google document that is in the description below that uses those numbers and shows you the data rates at 25, 30, 50, 60 and 120 frames a second in all available codecs. And I've also added how many minutes of recording you will get on a 128 gig card as stated on the back of the camera. Moving on to the next menu, you have diamet range. If you're shooting in RAW, it will automatically switch to film, whereas if you are shooting ProRes, you can choose from video, which is a 799 look, extended video, which is Blackmagic's profile for higher dynamic range and better color straight out of the camera, and film, which is their log profile. The window sensor switch is for when you are in HD ProRes mode and want to switch between two crop factors. Project frame rate allows you to change your project frame rate. Off-speed recording toggle, same function as the one earlier. Preferred card for recording allows you to define which card the camera will prioritise recording to and stop recording if card drops frames does exactly what it says. The last page on the record starts with a time-lapse function. This is pretty basic but it's nice to have in camera. You can adjust the slider to what interval you would like and go. You then have detail sharpening in several different levels that might be handy for fast turnarounds. And lastly, record LUTs clip, which allows you to record LUTs into your clips. Next up is monitor. Here you can change a few settings from the camera LCD, HDMI output or both. You can enable a range of monitoring settings that are similar to the ones in the quick access menu on the home screen. Clean feed, display 3D LUT, zebra, focus assist or peaking, frame guides, grid, safe area guide and false color. 
On the next page, you can toggle status text. This is the writing on the home screen. You can also change between having your audio meters in the bottom right or your current codec and resolution. And lastly, adjust your screen brightness. With HDMI, you can do the same thing and you can change between cinematographer or director. And lastly, you have the option to add frame guides and change the opacity of those guides. You can also toggle between peaking and colored lines for your focus assist, as well as the intensity level, color of that, and your threshold for your zebras. On the last menu, you have grid options and your safe area guide percentage adjustments. Next is audio. Here you can adjust both channels of your audio. You can select from the camera's internal mics, XLR input with and without thunder power, and then the 3.5mm mic input. You can then see your levels and then adjust your gain on each channel. On the next page, you can adjust your headphone volume, speaker volume, and enable phantom power when you select the XLR input. Next is setup. Here you can set your date and time, language, shutter measurement, flicker-free shutter settings, enable image stabilization if your lens has it, and type code drop frame. On the next page, you can change the custom function buttons on the top of the camera. You have F1, F2, and F3, which line up with the top of the camera, and you can either define them as presets or toggles. With presets, you can select any of these options and then dial in a preset you want for them and then set the adjustment to one of the custom buttons. Toggle Select allows you to change the function to a range of on-off style settings. For these toggles, you can then decide if you want those showing on your LCD, HDMI or both. This will be great to really customize the camera for your own shooting style. On the next page, you can toggle your tally light on the front of the camera and adjust the brightness of it. Reset your camera settings, black shade your camera, change playback between all clips and a single clip check your firmware revision and your hardware ID. This camera also features Bluetooth like the Ursa Mini Pro so you can control that via their iPad app. Next you have presets. These presets save everything and allow you to quickly change all of your customized settings quickly and easily. This is great if you want to switch between shooting scenarios quickly or if you're wanting to sync cameras up easily. Last but not least is the 3D LUTs tab. This is great if you have LUTs you know would suit a certain project and you want to be monitoring the image as it could turn out. You can load in a max of 10 LUTs. So that's our overview of the camera. Make sure to check out our other videos on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K in the description below.